This next demonstration is one that I do with my second year advanced chemistry class when I'm talking about crystal structures. But I've also used it in my first year class when I've introduced electrons and light. It also has application in food chemistry and in nuclear chemistry, as we'll see later when I discuss the experiment. Now, what I'm starting out with is some irradiated salt. And of course, this doesn't look like your regular salt. You can note that it has a color. Now, what's happened here is that regular sodium chloride has been placed in a nuclear reactor and irradiated with 180,000 rads of gamma, radi gamma radiation. Now, what does that do to the salt to produce this color? Well, we're going to go over to the board here and look at our crystal of sodium chloride and what happens when it's irradiated. Now, for this purpose, for my crystal, I'm going to use the yellow circle to represent a sodium ion and the green circle to represent a chloride ion. And with my students, I actually say, why did I pick those two colors outside of the fact that they do show up nicely? Well, I remind them about sodium giving a, a yellow flame with a flame test. And of course, when we think of chlorine, we think of a greenish gas. Now, this is our crystal of sodium chloride. But crystals aren't perfect. And so actually, even though we'll have sodium ions and chloride ions next to each other, sometimes there's a defect in the crystal. So I'm going to pull out one of the chloride ions. So because there is this defect, when you irradiate the sodium chloride, what happens is that electrons can move around from the energy and will let this red smaller circle represent an electron. And what will happen is that an electron can move into that vacant spot. And what it does is it produces a color center. And that's why we have the brown color. And that's a very stable arrangement. And it'll stay that way for quite some time. As you can see, I just dumped it out of the bottle here. And it's this brownish orange color. But what happens if you apply some heat to this? And that's what we're going to do with the hot plate. So what I'm going to do is take and sprinkle this on the hot plate. And we're going to have to have the lights dim down to a very low very low light source here and now I'm going to uh, sprinkle this on here and this is some thermoluminescence now with your students what you can do is set up hot plates around the room and have them in small groups sprinkle it on so that they can get a really close-up view. Now, when we turn the lights back on, what do you notice? It's white. It's back to regular sodium chloride. In fact, if it weren't a chemistry lab, we could use this sodium chloride on our food. And what has happened here is what we have done is we have kicked out that electron and given off energy in the process. Now, I said that this had application in the nuclear industry. I said we had nuclear reactions that we could relate to this. And so now I'm going to go over to the foam board and let's look at what's involved as far as nuclear chemistry. So radiation workers wear badges. And though those probably have evolved into something more sophisticated, they have used what are called thermolescent thermoluminescent dosimeters, TLDs. And what happens is any gamma rays that would hit that badge would store energy in the badge. Now, the radiation passes through. In other words, that salt is not dangerous. I'm not going to be glowing in the dark after using this demo. But the radiation passes through, but we have energy stored in the badge. And then what happens is that when you heat up the badge, that we give off light just like with our demonstration here. And then what they can do is measure with some type of photomultiplier tube just how much radiation was stored in that badge. And in that way, they can tell how much radiation that the worker was exposed to. 
Now, I just used sodium chloride, but the TLD actually used lithium fluoride. But this is also a good opportunity to point out to your students that lithium and sodium are in the same family as are chloride and fluoride ions in the same family, and so that really we're looking at something that is very analogous to what the demonstration just entailed. Now, it's also a good opportunity to talk about food chemistry, because maybe you've heard about irradiation being used as far as killing bacteria in food, and some people are real queasy about that. Uh, we hear a lot about hamburger being used and irradiated. And so you can talk about how when you irradiate food, again, the, the energy is passed through. And so it's not like you're storing gamma rays in your food, but the bacteria have been zapped by those gamma rays. Now, I like to bring in cross-curricular references in my class. And so this is a really nice opportunity to do that because what you can do when you're showing the demonstration is you might play some music, and uh, I'm going to show you how that music can be related to art. So let's go over to the easel again, and let's look at this painting by Vincent van Gogh. Now, this is called The Starry Night, and this is in New York at the Museum of Modern Art, and I tell my students how I've been there, and I've seen this painting up close and personal. But the thing is that you can draw an analogy between what we saw on the hot plate with those sparks of light being given out and our starry night. But when I said about the music being played with this, well, Don McLean wrote a song that I always called Starry Night, but actually it's called Vincent. And it starts out, Starry, Starry Night. And Don McLean says that he wrote that song after reading about Vincent van Gogh's life. And what's interesting is that there's a quote from Vincent van Gogh that actually says that looking at the stars helps me dream. So I think this is a really nice way to bring in some art as well as some music and show a demonstration that has application in a number of different ways.